You. You want to talk dirty? Dirty laundry. A whole mountain of it. That's what we're going to talk about. And where do you keep all that dirty laundry in this little tiny 6x12 shoebox? And how on earth do you get a washer and a dryer in here? With magic, of course. First we need a washer, a dryer, and a spinner. From the time I conceived living in this house, I always knew I was going to figure out a way to do my own laundry in this house. I hate laundromats. So I designed this cabinet to fit an apartment size washer, but things did not work out that way. So now I use the cabinet to store all that dirty laundry. I designed it so the lid would open to access the washer originally, but now it just stores all this dirty laundry. I don't use pressurized water in my tiny house. I have a main water tank and that feeds two gravity tanks in the ceiling, one for the kitchen, one for the shower. But I am connected to the pressurized water system in my RV park for one reason. This hose that stretches to the back of my trailer so that I can fill my washer. And just like that, my six by 12 tiny house is now full service tiny laundry room. So this little micro washer I got on Amazon for, I think $38, and I believe they're still the same price. Inflation hasn't affected this. <laughs> but it's not fully automatic. It has a motor and an agitator, but you have to fill it with water and you have to manually drain it. It has a little drain hose right here and you just drop it into wherever you're draining it. In my case, right here next to my shower. So this is how it works. You turn it on and it agitates one way and then it agitates the other way. It'll fit eight, no, seven men's t-shirts or three pair of pants or two sweatshirts has been my experience. We're gonna put in a pair of sweats, a pair of pajamas, a t-shirt and another pair of pants. And really, I think we could fit one more item. Throw in four pairs of socks to go with it. So we got a full load. So we're gonna take the hose that we MacGyvered up in my tiny house from my spice cabinet. <laughs> and I like to just give them clothes a squirt on the top to get them wet so they don't float to the top as I fill this. And then I have this handy on off switch on my hose and it just hooks up under the washer. But you never wanna leave this sucker alone while you're filling it because I've overfilled it. Disaster. We got our water in there, add some soap, and I like to agitate on the washing cycle for eight minutes. And there we go. We are washing. So once the timer goes off and we're done washing, we're gonna drain it. You just take the drain hose, you drop it in the shower. Since this doesn't have the ability to spin clothes, like your home washer would spin out the soapy water, I'm just gonna take my hose and squirt some water on the top with the drain hose still down to get most of that soapy water out. So we're full of water for the rinse. Gonna put some fabric softener in there. Do it up for three minutes. The wash cycle has ended and it's time to spin the water out of them clothes. My little spinner only accommodates half the clothes that go in the washer because it's even smaller than the washer. So I use a large stainless steel bowl, the biggest one I have in my kitchen, to transport the clothes because they're back there and the spinner's up here and I don't want water all over my floor. So a full stainless steel bowl is about what I find will fit in my little spinner. Now this spinner came with a little latch right here and you push the button and the lid would pop up and it would turn the spinner off. And then when you closed it, click, it would turn the spinner on. But I broke it off. <laughs> so I had to disassemble the spinner and MacGyver it so the switch is always in the on position. And now I have to plug it in to turn it on and pull the plug to turn it off. But I did not have to buy a new spinner because I am frugal. And if it keeps working, I'll keep using it. Gotta dump those clothes in there. 
try to make sure they're balanced real good. I don't want the water squirting all over my kitchen because this is just pointing up. So I'm gonna use my glass cutting board to direct that down into the sink so we don't have that catastrophe. Now I should put the lid on this for safety reasons. But to show you how fast it spins, we're gonna leave it off. And away we go. You gotta hold on to it until it gets going or it'll spin right off the counter. And like magic, once you get past that point, it'll just spin by itself. 1700 rounds per minute. <laughs> The spin cycle is up, I do it for three minutes, and they come out just like they were at your house, just barely down. Now it's time to go in the micro dryer. Okay. I dropped a piece. This little dryer, mm, this little dryer has four cycles. Auto dry, sterilization, delicate dry, and air dry. You just turn it on, tell it to go, Voila. Somebody's got to fold this laundry up, and I can't find my housekeepers anywhere, so it looks like it's on me. My multi-purpose camera. I like to roll my shirts up. Not really roll them, but I'll show you. Hands are easy breezy. Get the wrinkles out. Since I work a simple job, I don't need iron to close. And these will smooth themselves out anyway. You stack them all on top of the bed. That's my multi-purpose shelf as well. And here's how I do the shirts. Fold them in half. Grab them by the sleeves. Put them on the counter. Hold up the end a little bit. And then they're all gonna fit in my cupboards much easier this way than big huge shirts. Now somebody has to put all these clothes away. That's me. Little tip. If you keep your underwear and your socks in these bags that you wash delicate clothes in the washer with, much easier to manage them. They're not all over the place. And you can just yank the bag out and find what you want. For me, I just love being able to do laundry in my tiny house. It's a miracle. Does it take longer than at the laundromat? It does. Because all that laundry I showed you at the beginning, I could probably have done in less than two hours at the laundromat. But here, I can do it at my leisure in my house. So while the machines are doing the work, I'm doing other stuff. Because all that laundry, I think it equaled up to five loads in the washer. And then the spinner, I can only accommodate half of what the washer takes. So that's two trips to the spinner for each wash load. And then the dryer will take two loads from the washer. But how about the cost? It's like $1.75 to wash and $1.75 to dry. And if you do two loads a week, that's like $336 a year. I paid 38 for that little washer, 109 for that spinner, and 225 for the dryer. That's 372 bucks. So these machines have easily paid themselves back. And I could be here in my tiny house doing my laundry naked if I wanted. But I'm not. My micro laundry machines I acquired in 2020 for the washer and the spinner and 2022 for the dryer. So they've easily paid for themselves four times over. 
These are my two storage benches behind my tiny house, and that's where I store the crap that doesn't fit inside of it. Why are you hiding in there? You know we have a date. Laundry done. It is my favorite time of the day. Dinner time. Oh, damn it. <laughs> 